In this Easy Ed video lecture, we will learn about DC machines, their construction and working principle and the types of DC generators. In our day-to-day -day life, we come across many common terms such as generator, motor, etc. These devices are called as DC machines. They either convert the mechanical energy into electrical or electrical energy into mechanical energy. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. The device which converts mechanical energy into direct type electrical energy is called as a DC generator. The device which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy is called as a DC motor. But now we will only focus on the DC generator. A DC machine works on the principle that whenever the conductor cuts the magnetic flux lines, an EMF is induced in it which generates the sinusoidal current. Let's see the construction of a DC machine. It is made up of stationary parts such as yoke, poles and brushes and rotating parts such as armature, commutator and bearings. The yoke is the outer frame of the DC machine made up of a magnetic material such as cast iron. The pole. Every machine has even number of poles divided into three parts as pole core, pole shoe and the field winding. The armature. Armature core is cylindrical in shape and is mounted on a circular shaft. Armature is a part of a machine which rotates in a circular direction. A commutator is a cylindrical body mounted on a shaft along with the armature, thus forming a single body. Hence, the commutator also rotates along with the armature. The brushes are made up of carbon and mounted on the commutator. They are stationary and do not rotate. The external load circuitry is connected across these brushes as shown. The main function of the bearings is to support the rotating part and allow its smooth motion with minimum friction. DC generator works on Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction which states that when the conductor cuts the magnetic flux lines an EMF is induced in it. The direction of this induced EMF is stated from Fleming's right hand rule. For DC generators we use Fleming's right hand rule as we need to find the current and for DC motors we use Fleming's left hand rule as we need to find the motion. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Fleming's right hand rule states that if three fingers of a right hand namely thumb, index finger and middle finger are outsourced so that they are mutually perpendicular to each other and if the index finger is made to point in the direction of the magnetic field, then the thumb indicates the direction of the motion of a conductor and the middle finger gives the direction of the EMF induced in the conductor. The induced EMF is given by the equation E equals BLV sine theta, where E equals induced EMF, B equals flux density in Weber per meter square. L equals length of the conductor in meters and theta is the angle between the direction of the motion of the conductor and the magnetic field. The DC generator is constructed by keeping the two conductors AB and CD between two magnets. Both these conductors are connected to the commutator and the brushes are mounted on the surface of these commutators to which the external circuit is connected. Whenever the conductors cut the magnetic flux lines, the EMF is induced that causes the current to flow through the load circuit. When the conductor AB reaches the vertical position, rotating in clockwise direction, we get the maximum current. As it continues its motion and reaches to 180 degrees position, the current becomes zero momentarily. Thus, from 0 degrees to 180 degrees rotation, we get the positive half of the AC current generated. When the conductor AB attains the vertical value at 270 degrees, we get the maximum current again 
and the process continues generating a continuous AC current. Now, during the positive half conductor AB touches the brush B1. Thus, B1 attains the positive charge giving the positive cycle at the output. When AB touches the brush B2, B2 attains the positive charge providing the positive cycle again. The commutators are so designed that for every cycle the current will flow out towards the circuit given positive output only. The EMF equation for the DC generator is given by EG equals P FYN upon 60 into Z upon A where P equals number of poles of generator theta equals flux produced by each pole in Weber N equals speed of armature in RPM Z equals total number of armature conductors and A equals number of parallel paths in which the total number of conductors are divided. The symbolic representation of DC generator is as shown. The DC generator is basically divided into two categories separately excited generator and self excited generator. Self excited are further divided as the shunt generator, the series generator and the compound generator. In the separately excited DC generator, the field winding is supplied from the external, separate DC supply. The EMF induced is given by the equation EG equals load voltage V plus IA into RA plus the voltage drop cross brushes plus armature reaction drop. In self-excited shunt DC generator, the field winding is connected in parallel with the armature. As the load current increases, the armature current increases. Thus voltage drop IARA also increases. As a result of which, load voltage V decreases. Thus, we get the following load characteristics. The application of the shunt generator are battery charging, ordinary lightning, power supply purposes, etc. When field winding is connected in series with the armature winding while supplying the load, the generator is called as the series generator. For the series generator, we also take drop across the series field winding while finding the EMF equation. Unlike the shunt characteristics for the series generator, the load voltage V increases as the load current increases. Due to the residual flux retained by the field winding, the graph starts from the non-zero voltage value. The applications of the series generator are used as boosters on DC feeders and as constant current generators for welding generators and lamps. The last type is the compound generator. In compound generator, the poles of the windings are excited by two independent windings, shunt winding and series winding. Thus the name compound generator. If the series winding shields the shunt field, the generator is cumulative. But if the series winding opposes the shunt field, the generator is called as differential generator. There are two types of the compound generator. Short shunt generator and long shunt generator. If the winding is absent, the load characteristics are the same as the shunt generator. If the series winding aids the shunt field, it gives a positive boost to the voltage and the output voltage increases. If the series winding opposes the shunt field, it supplies a negative boost due to which the voltage decreases. Now let's review. The device that converts the electrical energy into mechanical or vice versa is called as the DC machine. There are two types of machines, the generator and the motor. Any machine can act as a motor as well as a generator. The different components of the DC machine are yoke, armature, poles, commutator, brushes, bearings, etc. The machine that converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy is called as DC generator. Fleming's right hand rule 
represents the directions of the motion of conductor, magnetic field and the induced EMF. The EMF equation for the DC generator is given by EG equals P 5N upon 60 into Z upon A. Two main types of DC generators are separately excited generator and self-excited generator. 